Now we don't have spring break in this country, but spring break looks pretty terrifying. Twenty Two Jump Street is directed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, written by Michael Bacall, Oren Uzio, and Rodney Rothman, and this time stars Jonah Hill, Channing Tatum, Amber Stevens, Wyatt Russell, and of course Ice Cube. And in 22 Jump Street, Schmidt and Janko apparently can't really do anything else for the police force. They're sent back to Jump Street to infiltrate a local college to again investigate a new synthetic drug. However, this time Schmidt is trying to keep more focused on the job itself, while Janko is beginning to meet new people who, you know, really, really click with him. And so this kind of puts the investigation at risk and as well as their friendship. Now, I just love the timing of this movie, you know, because the first 21 Jump Street, it came out just when I graduated high school, and now 22 Jump Street comes out when I'm, like, neck deep in college life, and, you know, I can really, really relate. College can be hell sometimes. There's also Phil Lord's and Christopher Miller's fourth movie, and what's impressive about them is that they always seem to take on these projects that people always think are gonna fail. You know, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs just kinda came out of nowhere, and you know, people weren't really expecting lots of great things from DreamWorks at that point, and it turned out to be a really good movie. The first 21 Jump Street, no one thought it was gonna be a good movie really because you know this is a reboot of this 80s show and it turned out to be really good also. The Lego movie for Pete's sake, no one thought it would be good, but it turned out to be absolutely awesome. And now we have 22 Jump Street also and you know people were still doubting it this time because of how you know it's probably going to be the same kind of movie you know just have the hangover syndrome. And for better or for worse for me at least watching 22 Jump Street especially like in a full theater is absolute chaos. Like people are just going ballistic over this movie and you know like I said for better or for worse so there's some good things some bad things. Now the first thing I actually want to talk about in, with regards to 22 Jump Street is the fact that it has this amazing soundtrack. And the Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, like based on their previous movies, you can tell they're guys who are really, really into very different kinds of music. You know, they have that whole hip-hop electronica stuff for 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street, but then they, you know, have that nice bubblegum pop stuff in the Lego movie and whatnot. And what's fun is that, you know, the music that's used in 22 Jump Street, like, on a normal daily basis, I wouldn't really listen to that kind of stuff because, you know, it's just not my thing. However, they really do make these songs fit. Like, like I mentioned in my review for 21 Jump Street, like, they're the only directors I know who can put in these really popular modern songs and make them work. It doesn't feel like they're pandering to an audience. And the music from Mark Mothersbaugh, who I think does the same music here, uh, like, the, th the theme song for 21 Jump Street, like, it really feels like a theme now. It feels very classic, almost, because, like, when you hear it, you know it's a 21 Jump Street theme. And it's really cool what the writers here did with the plot of this movie, because the main joke of this movie, whereas, you know, the main joke of 21 Jump Street was that, you know, rebooting these old shows can sometimes be a bad idea. Uh, in 22 Jump Street, the primary joke is that sequels, in general, have a tendency to kind of just rehash the same points and be not as good. And it's great how they really focus on this, but they really go beyond it. Like, this movie is so meta, like, it's so self-referential, like, they make comments about the actors themselves and, like, their careers and whatnot. And again, it's great how Lord and Miller are able to tackle, like, so many different things and just parodize, like, all of them. And, you know, they're parodying college life, they're parodying, like, modern teenager attitude, uh, and, of course, you know, the whole buddy cop thing. But they do succeed in making the plot a little bit more complex, you know? This is kind of more of, like, a mystery kind of thing than, like, a, just a straightforward investigation. But the thing that really drives this movie, in my opinion, is the bromance between Schmidt and Jenko. It's really, really great because while it's clearly, you know, being played as a joke also, it is very, very sincere. You can feel how Jenko relates to Schmidt and vice versa and how they each, you know, kind of pull each other up sometimes and, you know, pull each other down also. And I really, really do appreciate how they gave a bit more focus on Jenko's side of the story because, you know, in the first 21 Jump Street, one of my complaints is that, you know, Schmidt kind of got a bigger piece of the pie and here, you know, they do kind of share equal screen time this time. And what's great about the script here, especially in terms of, you know, the whole romantic aspect between Schmidt and Jenko, is that the dialogue comes off as, like, a cross between a romantic comedy and, like, just a straight-up comedy. There's this really realistic sort of breakup scene that happens, and at first, like, it's really, really funny. It is really, really funny, but when you kind of, like, think about it, it's really also kind of heartbreaking. And of course, this writing would not have worked without the amazing chemistry between Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum. These two are like this amazing power couple, almost. They still manage to be kind of like polar opposites, even if they got some of the differences sorted out. So, you know, they have the difference between them, but, you know, there's still enough in common between them that they can function as one team. 
Jonah Hill is really, really good in his role. Like, he plays the sincere parts really, really well. Uh, Channing Tatum is definitely more confident with his comedy this time, and just overall, these two are, have, you know, great performances. The rest of the sporting actors are fine. You've got Wyatt Russell as this football player that uh, Channing Tatum's character befriends, and he's really good. Amber Stevens as the girl who Jonah Hill's character kind of hooks up with is also good, but the person who really steals this show is Ice Cube. Every time Ice Cube is on screen in this movie, it's absolutely hysterical. He has some of the best moments, you know, in both of these movies. Like, they're just, the audience I was watching with just went nuts during scenes, and it's amazing to watch. And as usual, there are tons of cameos here from, you know, Lord and Miller's friends. It's nice to kind of just spot them. And 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street really would not have had the same impact they did if not for Lord and Miller as the directors because them as directors, they always find new fun ways to do certain things, you know? Like I said, my intro, Spring Break looks really, really scary from like my point of view, but Lord and Miller shoot it in such a way that it really does feel like a huge party, you know? It just feels great. And again, they're two directors who you can really tell are just having fun with the material, you know? They, they shoot certain things so well, like, they, they know when to use slow-mo and stuff, they know when to use split-screen and certain music and stuff like that, and the best part about it is that this movie doesn't really feel like a rehash of 21 Jump Street, even if the joke is that, you know, it's pretty much the same thing, it really isn't the same thing. And you really just gotta thank them for the tone of this movie, it's very, very optimistic. Even like during the heavy moments, you know, it's not that heavy to the point that it's like depressing or anything. There's always this undercurrent of joy and energy behind it, and all four of their movies are just a blast to watch. However, I do have a few problems with this movie upon, you know, just kind of reflecting on it after a while. For one, there are, there's a certain scene or like a couple of scenes where there's, you know, bad green screen being used. And some might argue that this is, you know, part of the joke. It's, you know, it's, it's them being this typical sequel that's not as good. However, I don't feel like that the green screen is being used as a joke. Like, it really just kind of felt like bad green screen, so yeah. However, I take a bigger issue with the fact that some of the supporting characters in this movie, actually most of the supporting characters, excluding Ice Cube, are very, very weak in my opinion. Like, even in the first movie, I kind of cared about Dave Franco's character and uh, Brie Larson's character. I felt like they were actual characters, but here, it really does feel like the supporting cast isn't very interesting. Like, they're not exactly that funny all the time either. And like I mentioned, this movie is, for better or for worse, more chaotic than the first one. And, you know, that's really all up to preference at this point, but I like my comedy, I guess, somewhat smarter, somewhat tighter. And this movie isn't exactly tight. It's very, very all over the place, in my opinion. And this is the first time I'm going to say this about a Lord and Miller movie, but some of the jokes kind of overstay their welcome. They kind of extend the joke to the point that, you know, okay, okay, we get it, and the audience kind of just stopped laughing after a while. But 22 Jump Street in the end is still a pretty good movie. Like, it's definitely something you have to watch, especially with your college friends. You guys will have a blast. You will relate to it so much. The open mic stuff that happens in this movie is completely accurate. However, my concern now is that I don't think Lord and Miller are going to do 23 Jump Street. Like, I won't spoil why, but, you know, there's certain things they do in this movie that kind of stop them from doing sequels, but we'll see. Oh, by the way, also, just stay for the end credits. I mean, like, that end credit sequence is probably some of the best end credits you'll ever see in a movie ever. Right, so that's my review for 22 Jump Street. Have you guys seen it? What do you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment and let's have a conversation.